Derived energy, yeah. Um, so you've been uh, put in the category that is labeled with what is probably, in my opinion, the most offensive word in the English language. Um, it's an interesting concept of Ethelist and an interesting character that continues to surface, continually surfaces in his uh, in his philosophy. And as I've said before to other people, I think that it's useful and productive to assume that what he says, even at his most abusive, he sincerely believes. Um, the reason why it's useful is that can you imagine what it would be like if you existed in a world in which everybody was an asshole? Everybody was an uncaring, selfish, vicious, um, careless, egoistic, um, sadistic asshole. What uh, and, and you know you could see this. You were one of the few people that could actually see this. What level of frustration would that cause? Um, it might sort of lead one to sort of pass judgment on the entire human race in the way that, if he is sincere, he seems to have done. Um, it's n not enough if you ask me to simply label him a misanthrope and forget about it, because. Um, as you say, he has great intelligence and charisma, and I say that his stamina is second to none. How you can keep up that level of um, judgmentalism over so long a period of time is impressive, and especially if it's sincere. So as I say, imagine if you did live in a world in which there were as many assholes as Ethelist sees when he looks around him. There are so many people who are defective in a fundamental way. Um, this term asshole that he brings up, or you know, there's various other words to, to describe it, um, but they all have something to do with someone who has consciously and willfully violated some notion of objective morality. There is a rule out there um, that they have violated, which puts them in the category of asshole. Um, now, if someone actually sincerely believes this, um, why shouldn't they just get on the internet and engineer an endless uh, and relentless onslaught of guilt against everybody for absolutely everything, including their own existence. Um, I've never quite seen anyone with a greater capacity to lay a sustained guilt trip than Ethelist. Um, and it's fascinating because when you look at the world, I said, imagine living in a world in which, you know, a world that was populated with assholes, with selfish people, cruel people, vicious people, um, careless people who simply didn't care about anything. Well, <laughs> we do live in one. Um, you can, some people would say you can like it or lump it. I don't put it in quite so stark terms, but it looks to me that of several possible options, Ethelist has opted to lump it. Now that's okay, because that's his own personal existence that he's um, devoting to lumping uh, the imperfections of reality, and in particular, I guess, the human race. Um, and he is simply too intelligent and too articulate to not want to at least employ as a foil to one's own philosophy. He probably believes it when he's abusive. Um, and I, and in, in a certain sense, that's what makes his 
philosophy so useful and in a, in a certain sense so valid. Um, if your philosophy can't stand up to his attacks, um, then you'd better rethink your position. And he's an absolute expert at sustained attacks. Um, he has both the aptitude, the stamina, to keep that up over a long period of time, and he's got the intelligence and the charisma to articulate his position. Um, his position being attacking essentially everything, uh, and, and doing so sincerely, and with the belief that, that what he's engaged in is an important task. Um, I'm not asking you to uh, be kind to him. <laughs> no, uh, quite the opposite, actually. What I'm saying is you mustn't get too worked up by the abuse. Um, the guilt that is inherent in what he um, espouses and the means by which he espouses his position is on a level of which I think most of us are fortunate to actually witness in our lives. Um, it's an extreme case of judgment on essentially the entire cosmos. The entire cosmos is essentially being told that it ought to be ashamed of itself. Now, remember, guilt has sort of two um, two elements. There is the feeling of guilt, and there is the constant, or conscious rather, infliction of guilt. <laughs> They're not necessarily the same thing. And the interesting thing is, guilt in and of itself is in many ways the distilled essence, the ultimate negative value state. Interesting paradox, isn't it? 